Uh, we'll get started, guys, so that each can get to training, which is not to start about now. So, uh, have you got a microphone there? Yeah, just pass it to our friends and we'll get underway. Uh, hello, Sudhi. Uh, welcome to Karachi. Uh, I just wanted to ask uh, what will be your strategy for third ODI because uh, it's a very crucial match for you and for Pakistan as well. So, what will be your strategy for the third match? Yeah, I think firstly um, the pitches could be quite different to what we had in uh, Lahore and Islamabad, um, especially Islamabad for the ODIs. So, firstly, just um, adapting to what they look like. Um, very important to look to take early wickets. I think um, that's where Pakistan have definitely beaten us in these games. Is um, they've established good partnerships at the opening uh, top of the order. Fakhar Zaman has played incredibly um, in the last two matches, and I think to. Uh, be able to break that initial partnership is going to be very important for us as a bowling unit. I think our batting's been fantastic so far and we'll keep adapting. Cool. Uh, in the middle here. Uh, I will go to the side then. Directly. Oh, right. um, sorry. Uh, Ish, you, um, you're here obviously 2-0 down. Same situation happened in the T20Is. You obviously wouldn't desire to be in this position, but what's been the mentality going into this? Is it similar to what you had in the T20s? And how have you felt the squad's been depleted given what's happening with the rest of world cricket right now? Yeah, I think, um, you know, looking at the T20 series, it was fantastic that we were able to make um, you know, a bit of a comeback after two losses in the series. Um, we played fantastically well, uh, very, very inexperienced side, not only in games, but especially in these conditions, and we did really well for that. Um, we've really benefited from going game by game. Uh, I think it's very important in these parts of the world to be able to do that. Um, the ODI is obviously slightly longer game, and so you have to be patient for longer periods of time. And, you know, in the first two games, I'd say Pakistan have done that better than us, and they've come out on the winning side. So um, the quicker we can adapt to these conditions, having played here earlier this year, a few of us, we can pass that information on to the younger guys that haven't played here before. Um, and hopefully we can hit the ground running when it comes to the fir uh, first ODI in Karachi tomorrow. My good friend Shahid, oh, just behind you. Um, you. Is, uh, do you think weather would be a worry for New Zealand? Sorry, could you say? Weather, that? weather, heat. Oh, you know, I, I think if you asked us that maybe five, ten years ago, potentially, but um, you know, I think a lot of us now have played in these these hot conditions a lot in the past. Um, and the day nighters are pretty decent, you know, it's definitely a lot hotter during the day and then in the evenings it cools down and there's a nice breeze that comes across. Karachi itself doesn't feel as humid as perhaps the other two places, so um, that's something to contend with. Obviously very different to being, you know, playing cricket in New Zealand, but um, that's the whole, I guess, if you want to, you know, play international cricket, you have to be willing to, um, you know, be effective in a lot of different conditions and that's something that we pride ourselves on as a New Zealand side and, and hopefully we can in, uh, continue to do that over the next series. The front row. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is about from Express News Collection. Uh, I don't want to talk about the Pindi wicket, uh, but uh, definitely you are now in Karachi, so I would like to ask you about the wicket of Karachi, because uh, most of the time Karachi wicket play a different role. So did you get the chance to read uh, the wicket? And uh, do you think that the weather conditions will be suitable for you guys? Thank you. Yeah, I think, um, you know, we, we played here two or three months ago, um, but I, I think during that time it was a different climate. Um, I know a few of the uh, Pakistani players were saying that it used to be a little bit wet during winter, and so when there was a bit of moisture it probably held on the wicket slightly more and, you know, you got a bit of uh, purchase as a spin bowler. Um, but I think having a look at it yesterday, it looks quite dry. Um, you know, generally when you see that white sheen on the wicket, it's quite low. Um, but I think it's important not to have too many preconceived ideas before you go in and see the wicket and you really have to take that time to assess and fortunately in one day cricket you've got a little bit of time up your sleeve to have a look at how the wicket is playing and then make your plans for the rest of the game there so um, you know, assuming what happens with the toss I think it's important to make those, those adap adaptations quite early on. Uh, so the, uh, here I'm. Mr. Saklem Bukstak was the Pakistan chief coach few months ago and he is now in the New Zealand dressing room. He has a lot of inside information from Pakistan team. What the benefit he provided to the spinners and the New Zealand team in beating Pakistan in the T20, T20 series? Yeah, look, um, Saklem Bukstak to, to have uh, you know a spin bowling mind like him in our dressing room, you know, especially from a Western perspective where you know, we haven't really had access to guys that are, you know, have played in these conditions for years and years and years on end. 
I mean, Sikhlein Mushtaq, the inventor of the Dusra, um, one of the greatest spin bowlers that's played the game. Uh, he's, he's of great benefit to us in our spin bowling unit. Um, you know, I know myself and, uh, and the other two bowlers that have bowled spin in this tour, Cole and Ruchin, have really benefited from work with him. Uh, his name is now Guruji. We don't we don't call him uh, Mushi. We call or, or we don't call him Saki. We call him Guruji. That's why. Yep. Over here, then we'll go to the last three. Hi, Ish. Over here. Oh, yep. Yeah. Sorry. So uh, I wanted to ask about Fakhar Zaman. Uh, how difficult has uh, it been for you guys to tackle him? Because you know, two centuries in a row, winning the games twice. So what kind of challenges has he posed to your team and what is the plan against him or what kind of approach do you guys, uh, are you guys going to make uh, in the next three games? Yeah, look, Fakhar has played in incredibly well. Um, I think our, our bowling unit has you know, been really good in terms of coming together and trying to formulate plans against Fakhar. Um, the last two games he's just played exceptionally well. Um, and, and you know, taken a couple of the games away from us, and that's been uh, pretty amazing to watch. He's at the top of his game. Uh, he's done really well. Um, obviously, we've got three games to go, so we're going to have to find a way to be able to get him out. Um, and that's something that's really exciting. You know, you have to build these strategies when you play international cricket. So that's something we're looking forward to, hopefully, doing in the next three games of the series. And um, and Fuck has been great on the park, and he's also provided us with some beautiful dumbokt uh, gorst and some lamb chops as well, so he's, um, he's looked after us really well. Our security guard, uh, Terry, he's uh, definitely really enjoyed and benefited from all the, all the gorsh that he's provided for us, so thank you for that fucker. but um, yeah, also he's played really well. Yeah, cool. All right, last few here, we'll try and rush through them so we can get to training. In uh, Pindi Peach's uh, uh, fully uh, batting track, uh, no help with the spinner, so I expected the Karachi pitches uh, uh, for the both the bowlers and batsmen uh, for the lead to that? I, I just think the you know the way that it looks it looks like it's going to be a little bit lower than perhaps the pindi pitch, um, but also we we just can't go in with that preconceived idea you know it's going to be this way we have to be adaptable if it does end up spinning we have to play a certain way if it doesn't then we have to also play a, a different way as well but I think it's just important to to take some time and and one day cricket allows you that luxury to have you know maybe three five six overs to have a look at what it's doing before you make the plans. Okay, last few so. Okay, New Zealand has lost two matches back to back, right? So, are you missing Ken Williamson? Oh, um, you know, if if Kane was around, I mean, like it, you'd be silly not to want Kane Williamson in your team. I think you know, not just the New Zealand team, but every team in the world would want a guy like Kane Williamson in their team. And you know, unfortunately, he's injured, and uh, you know, it's really fortunate to be playing in the IPL. Uh, Kane Williamson is one of the best players that the world's ever seen, and we've been really fortunate to have him in our team over the last few years. And um, you know, where it's unfortunate that the guy's injured and he's not playing, I think it's great for, for guys like Mark Chapman, Daryl Mitchell, uh, Will Young, you know, to be able to take some roles that perhaps they w wouldn't get the chance to in other, other situations. And I think they've all played exceptionally well um, in what are some really tough conditions historically for, for New Zealand teams. So um, it shows that I think New Zealand cricket's in a really good place when you're missing a guy like that, but you're still getting the bulk amount of runs that that you know are required to, to win games of cricket and unfortunately we haven't come up on the winning side in the last two games but uh, I think it bodes really well for us not just for this series but also moving forward the next few years. Last two to the right here. Uh, Sudi, uh, New Zealand media reported something about IPL today raising concerns over the participation of New Zealand players in IPL especially in World Cup year. Being a player what do you think how important is it for players to participate in bilateral series to get prepared for the mega event like World Cup? I think both, uh, both opportunities provide great benefit for that. Um, one, the World Cup is going to be in India um, and so if the guys are playing you know, a high level of cricket in India it's um, obviously going to prepare them quite well to know what the conditions will be like later in the year. And I think equally it's a great chance for you know, other guys to be able to put their name up, one for selection, but also get ready if they get the opportunity to be in the squad later in the year, to be playing in the subcontinent as well. I mean, it's very rare that you know, you, you know, as a New Zealand side you get 23, 24, 25 players all playing in the subcontinent at once. And that can only be beneficial for our cricket as a whole. And uh, I think in a World Cup year, we're really fortunate to be able to do that. Final question here. Uh, Fayaz from Bowl News. Uh, in last match, uh, your bowling was not up to the mark. You gave 79 runs at all, and it is the uh, maximum runs at uh, in then that match. So, do you think that the next uh, three matches will be the most powerful bowler in you inside and your New Zealand sides? 
Oh, look, uh, I'm an international leg spin bowler. Um, you know, at, at times the batters can get the best of you, and other days it's your day as well. So, um, you know, you almost have to sit back and park it now, move on. It's a new uh, new three-game, you know, stretch that we've got here in Karachi. Um, like I said, Fakir Zaman played incredibly well, took great risks against our spinners, and it paid off for him. And so um, he ended up on the winning side. Um, you know, hopefully over the next few games we can make some adjustments and be better for it. Thanks, everyone. Thanks very much, Aish. Cool. Thank you. Cheers, guys. Cool. Thank you.